This is a bit unusual for me to do two reports on Burma back to back, but there are some details on a breaking story that I think perfectly illustrate the mentality of the generals who seized power in Myanmar in a coup back in 2021. If you've watched even just a few of my previous videos on the civil war in Burma, you'll know that I am constantly harping on about how the fighting has long been about personal fortunes, with the military leaders basically using their power to accrue vast wealth. The following situation gives a perfect example of this and the military commander's priorities. On the 8th of July, the commander of the Myanmar Navy, Admiral Zwe Win Mint, was arrested for refusal to carry out orders. Initial reports were that he had resigned from his post, which he had been appointed to only in January, and the suspicion is that he resigned over orders he considered unacceptable and was then arrested for his refusal. Now, some details concerning the orders he refused to follow have come out. At the end of June, the Arakan Army, the AA, took control of the town of Thandwe, located on the Gulf of Bengal. Included in this catcher was the famous Napali Beach, an area that was a cornerstone in Myanmar's attempts to break into international tourism. With seven kilometres of pristine palm-fringed sand and crystal waters, the place is apparently spectacular and has had substantial investment placed into it, with 64 top-end hotels and resorts built here in the years before the coup. And guess who owns them? Yep, either generals, members of their families, or their hangers-on, which includes one Anatoly Bolutnikov, a rather mysterious Russian investor who is president of the Russia-Myanmar Association for Friendship and Cooperation. Needless to say, Myanmar's current dictator, Min Ong Hlaing, was not too pleased with his and his cronies' assets at Nepali Beach falling into the hands of the Arakan army and demanded they be taken back. Unfortunately for the Myanmar military, the only ways to access the area are either through Tanwe Airport or along two roads running through the mountains, and all of these are firmly under the control of the Arakan army. This left only one possible means of reclaiming the lost beach, amphibious assault, which Ming Ong Hlaing ordered his then Navy chief, Zwei Win Mint, to undertake. However, as the Arakan army are one of the larger, more competent and better equipped of the ethnic armed organisations, they had expected this and had thoroughly fortified the beach area, including apparently turning the captured results into fortresses. Mint, recognising that storming the beaches in the face of the sort of defensive fire that the Arakan could no doubt muster would be suicide, requested that he be given permission to use naval artillery for preparatory bombardment to break up the Arakan defences before mounting an assault in landing craft. This was expressly denied by Min Ong Hlaing. The obvious message is that the hunter chiefs want the damage to their property kept to an absolute minimum and are perfectly happy to throw away as many of their soldiers' lives as needed to ensure that. Mien apparently didn't think that was acceptable and resigned and has now been placed under arrest for his intransigence. I can't say whether Mien's refusal was out of concern for the well-being of his troops or just the fact that such an unsupported assault would definitely not work, and as I have a famously low opinion of the upper echelons of the Myanmar military, I am happy to go with the latter. Regardless, Mien is now under arrest, and it remains to be seen if his successor is willing to launch some sort of amphibious operation against Nangpali Beach, and just how many soldiers Minong Hlaing is willing to throw away there.